Hello and welcome back to the House of Stitches. Uh, if you are a new viewer, welcome to you as well. Um, my name is Karen, aka Corota. Uh, this is a knitting and crochet and other stitch work podcast that I do. And I've just been looking forward all month to coming back and talking to you about what I got going on. Um, I have a, a finished work from the past to share that I did years ago. I ended up finding it after moving some furniture around. So I thought I'd share it with you. And um, I got several works in progress. Uh, no finished knitted or crochet items. The uh, finished work from the past is a art quilt that I did many years ago, a collage art quilt. Uh, so I'll share that with you and then uh, chat a little bit, just a little about uh, life stuff and um, then we'll call it a day, okay? So with that said, um, oh, I guess I should tell you where to find me because I have no show notes. Um, so if you want to contact me, contact me through my email or uh, my Facebook page, which I rarely check, but I do check it. Um, I have a blog as well. Uh, I'm on Ravelry. Um, and I'm on Instagram. And uh, mainly all my digital work is Studio Corota. I'm on Ravelry as Corota, K-A-R-O-D-A, -A, 2, as in the number 2. Um, um, but if you Google Studio Corota, I should come up. My email is corota at gmail.com. Uh, so um, if I talk about anything or reference anything that you have questions about or uh, you want to communicate with me, you can either leave a comment down below. I do respond to comments here on YouTube. Um, or you can email me. Um, and I'll get back with you. I think... I think by YouTube, yeah, I think you, yeah, just use my email at Corona because I think maybe my YouTube channel might be tied to another email, which I rarely ever check. But anyway, I'll get, get this going, okay? I'm going to share with you my uh, finished work first. Like I said, I found it after moving some furniture around. And I thought, oh, I forgot to hang, hang that. And I'm not sure I'm going to hang it here. It's not really uh, a well-designed work, but it is a good uh, uh, piece that re kind of reflects uh, my interest, I guess. And this was me experimenting, my first experiment with fabric collage. And I'll put a steel, I'll put a steel, steel shot of it, because I know it's kind of hard to see with me moving it around. I'm not getting it all in the frame. But this is a print on a print on fabric. Um, the photo that you see here was printed on silk. And the woman behind the child there is my great aunt right here. And these, we have no clue who these are. This was a found photo after she had passed, uh, given to us by her uh, a nephew. Um, but it's three women, and they're laying on in the grass in what looks to be a park-like setting. And they're kind of laying, balancing each other on each other's hips. And then the child is in front. And uh, then that's, like I said, my great aunt, and uh, who lived to be a hundred. And then, I don't know if you see the words there, if you can see them. That's a poem I wrote about her after I met her for the first time. Um, actually, it was the only time I met her. And I printed the poem out on silk organza and kind of wove it in between the photo. And this is a tree, or it's supposed to mimic a tree. In female, I intentionally made a female shape of the tree. 
And this stitching here was me trying to do machine embroidery. But machine embroidery, oh my God, it takes a lot of thread work. And this, I didn't finish it because I got very impatient. Uh, but this should have been much, much denser. Um, but, uh, and then the fabric, the light green fabric in the back was fabric I dyed and stamped on with the leaves. That's my phone ringing somewhere. Where? Okay. I'm not going to edit this, so it's going to have to ring. I'm going to, I don't know where it's at. down there on the floor. Hold on. Okay. Alright. Sorry about that. But that was, this is, it was done in female form, the tree, intentionally. And the branch here is dripping kind of mimicking sap, but I made the, the stones, the embellishments red to symbolize blood, and then a basket woven out of uh, upholstery fabric, actually, um, upholstery weight fabric, and the basket kind of is catching the blood, and these leaves here are also stamped on the fabric. So um, the name of the piece is entitled Blood. Uh, and at the time I was really into genealogy and I love collecting old photos uh, of family as well as unknown. If I find a very old photo of uh, an African American or an African person, I will, um, I'll buy it because I just, I, I feel like I need to rescue those photos. But anyway, uh, yes, yeah, so I buy them if I find them out in antique stores or secondhand shops. So, um, but yeah, so that's, uh, and I have it mounted on a canvas. Yeah, because I wanted, I knew I wanted to hang it. Most of the quilts that I create, I've never created a bed quilt. Uh, one throw, I will, I did create a throw, but most of my quilts are always designed to be hung on the wall. And I haven't made one in, in years. Even though I have one on my design board that's been there for about two years. Yeah. So I'm trying to, uh, I think I've mentioned it before, narrow down my art supplies and um, my uh, surface design supplies because I like designing my own fabrics. Um, and just kind of narrowing it down and, you know... Um, seeing what I want to work with. Um, just kind of, just because my, before I was spread out, I had my interest in, in textiles and doing, working with textiles was all over the place. Uh, you know, if you could do it with textiles, I wanted to know how to do it. I wanted it in my toolbox, so to speak. But um, I'm trying to kind of narrow that down and clean up my space. So, yeah. So next I'm going to just go ahead and move into my works in progress um, on my knitting and crochet front. So I have several. I decided I am famous for letting something languish and then going back to it and then frogging it. And But I decided that instead of letting something languish, that I would not have a project that I was not actively working on. So in the course of a week, I will either crochet or knit a few rows, uh, if nothing but a few rows. Sometimes I, some days I dedicate that this is the only thing I'm going to do. And I just do just that. But in the course of the week, I must touch all of my whips. So um, this first one is a scoody. And a scoody is a scarf and hood combination. And this is for a friend. She actually emailed me a picture and said, can you make this? And I said, yes, I would. And it, this is crochet, uh, a granny stitch. And I've been looking at 
two podcasters who, um, I look at more than two podcasters, but two of the podcasters that I've watched. It, one is a young woman from the UK who designs really interesting uh, blankets and cardigans with granny squares. And I think it's HDG or HGD Designs. I, um, I know it begins with an H. The other two letters, I'm not sure. Uh, but like I said, she's from the UK, a very young woman um, who is a crocheter. And uh, yeah, and every time I see, I've never done Granny Squares before or the Granny Stitch, but every time I see it, I fall in love with it. Um, uh, there's also another young woman who has Crochet Cakes podcast. I can't think of her name. But she's doing a tunic dress that I absolutely love with little small um, granny squares. Love it. Love them. Love them. So, uh, which I'm thinking about making some kind of clothing for myself in granny squares. And I want it wild and colorful. But anyway, this is going to be a scuddy, And this is the hood part. And this is where I seamed it. And it'll go on like this. It doesn't, it'll get an edging around here. And I'm going to put a tassel. I love that how it hangs. And I can just see a little tassel hanging off. And a little, I wish I would make like a little capelet, but I'm going to just do the, the uh, scarf that will be attached to the bottom and it'll be able to tie around like that, like so. And I know she doesn't watch this podcast. I'd be surprised if she watches my podcast. But this yarn is done is um, Socks That Rock Victoria Base, which is a silk wool blend. Uh, and the color is called Her Royal Highness Purple. So that's the main color or the color that is tying it all together. And then I'm using... Uh, a Noro Silk Light and the color changes as you can kind of see and so this is what the color changes are you see here between the purple and I think this is a free pattern I believe it's a free pattern but just in case it's not I'll just show you how it's going to look with this is the kitty version um, and it's called The Hat and I by Markin, M-A-R-K-E-N, by Markin, The Hat and I. So, um, yeah, I didn't have just enough of this, even though it comes, I think, in about 600 yards. And uh, I guess it's considered a fingering, heavy fingering weight, maybe. Um. So I just need to make the uh, scarf for it and uh, do the edging, and it will be a finished object. But I really enjoy doing this granny stitch. I can see a skirt in it. I would love to have a skirt that you wear over a longer skirt, like a maxi skirt, straight maxi skirt, but really colorful, or over leggings, a skirt that you wear over leggings. Um, so, I, yeah, I really love that. So, and so that's a gift knit that I have to have finished, but I put Thanksgiving, so it should be finished. I mean, that's a, I can do the scarf in a day, really, so. And, uh, in fact, I've started doing the chain work for the scarf. And I'm using a, my, okay, no, these are my uh, knockoff clover-like hooks that I got on Amazon, uh, and it, it works pretty good, and I think it's a six mil, yeah, it's a six millimeter that I'm using, and I'm not sure, I'm learning, I'm learning my crochet hooks by millimeter, so I don't know the um, American size for it, so that's what that is, a six millimeter, yeah. <clears throat> My other crochet work 
is a very languishing uh, wrap that I love doing. I don't know why I stopped. I don't know. I, but I'm doing this on a... Um, Crochet hook. I hate that. <laughs> I think this is also on a six millimeter. And it is, I love this woman's design. This is a paid for pattern by B E R N I O L I E S Designs. And she has an Etsy shop and she has lots of lace, crochet lace weight shawls and wraps. So I'm doing this out of a, a Malabrigo. Very thin yarn. It's, it's a lace weight. A silk silk packa, which is a silk wool and alpaca blend, and it's in the colorway called Sunset. I guess I sh I've shown this before. When I first started podcasting, I'm embarrassed to say, but this was one of my languishing whips that I am now doing. I'm touching it every week now. And it's like two-thirds of the way finished. Yeah. And it has a four row. I'm in a, the section, which is the majority of the wrap, that's a four row repeat. So yes, and I can't wait to blot this out. I love it to see it blocked out because it's going to open up that lace weight. Mm -hmm. But it's a wrap in a rectangle shape. So like I said, it was so close to being done. I don't know why I stopped. I don't know why I stopped. But look at the rest, look at her. I strongly suggest if you love shawls and lace weight, uh, her work is just absolutely stunning. So, and uh, I found it on Ravelry, but her link will take you to her uh, Etsy shop. Okay, from this point, I have nothing, I have knitting. Mm, yeah. Knitting, and uh, I'll share with you my acquisition that came yesterday. Uh, I'm participating in um, um, Hohi, Hohi Locatelli's Fall Make Along and I'm in the group making uh, shawls and I bought this pattern I think it was the first paid for pattern that I bought. I bought it many many years ago uh, and it's a shawl called Pure Joy. I saw it on a podcast. Um, I don't know, can't remember the name of it, but it was two sisters. Uh, sorry about all the noise. Things going on. Two sisters from Oregon who, I think both of them were English teachers. Maybe at the high school or college level. Um, but they did, uh, they shared their knitting and they did book reviews, I think, toward the end. But uh, I saw this shawl. Um, sorry about all the background noise. I, I mean, there's family here. What can I say? But um, but I thought somebody was coming in. But this is the shawl by Hoki Locatelli that I'm making. And... The yarn that I'm using is Cascade Yarns Heritage. 
Um, and you want to ask, I think for colorways they have numbers. So I'm using this as the main color. And this as the secondary color. It's a very, very dark green. And I'm knitting these on my Knitter's Pride interchangeable wooden needles. And I think this is a either a 4.0. I guess it would help if I put some glasses on. Four point oh millimeter, um, and with this, I learned to do a garter tab cast on. Yep, I did it a couple of times before I got it right, and I'm also doing shape short row shaping with the wrap and turn, and that is new for me. I mean, I've done it on socks, not too successfully. Because I am not a sock knitter. I've, it'll be a while before I try to attempt those again. But I like it. I, I, at first I thought, oh my god, maybe my hose or my lace is not aligning up right. But I think it looks good. And I'm carrying, I don't know what's going on right there though. Huh. But I'm carrying the yarn. And instead of cutting it, I carry it. And... I don't know how that's supposed to look, but this is the back side. There is a definite wrong side. And I'm using this for something. <laughs> I can't remember. It's a stitch marker. But, uh, yeah. So i just kind of begun. Uh, I love garter stitch. I do. I'm, I'm digging that a lot. I love the uh, wavy look of it. Uh, yeah, I think I like that better than stockinette, to be honest. But anyway, um, I'm digging it. So, I don't want to make a mistake, so I go slow. And, uh, you know, sometimes I get into this rhythm, and I think, oh, yeah, I got this. I got this. I got this. I got this. Oh, drop stitch. Drop stitch. <laughs> You know, when the alarm goes off, right? <laughs> but, um, so I'm trying. I really, you know, knitting is like my coffee. And crochet is like my tea. I usually drink tea late in the evenings or very early mornings before people get up. And coffee, um, usually I have it with breakfast, but I have several cups of it. Um, and I usually walk away from the table with at least a cup. I've done that this morning. Um, so tea kind of calms me down, more meditative, you know, when I want to kind of get into my zone. Uh, and um, coffee is sort of like pumps me up, ready for the day. I can take on anything. Let's do this. Well, that's the way knitting is for me. It's like, I can do this. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. It's a challenge. Let's go for it, you know. That's my knitting. And then, you know, crochet is sort of like, it's time to retreat now. <laughs> time to fall back. <laughs> so that's what I do. Um... Another languishing uh, whip that I found, I really didn't find this. I knew it was there. <laughs> I just hadn't touched it. You know, my knitting has improved from when I started it. Yeah, it has improved. And um, so I didn't really want, I kept looking at it, and I had a lot of mistakes in it. I remember, but I can't find them now, which pisses me off because I started frogging it <laughs> but I, I knew it this is a gift net and I knew it had mistakes in it so at the time I was making it I was very frustrated uh, with how the mistakes look even after I fi tried to fix it 
you know, part of knitting is learning how to fix mistakes. And um, this is for my daughter who asked for this. It's called the Chatworth's Cable Poncho. And it's a free pattern, Lion Brand free pattern. And I'm doing it out of the yarn that's, it, that's called for. It's a Lion Brand Vanish Choice Worsted Weight in Oatmeal and Gray Marble. And this was, I had needed six, the left side, which was just stockinette and ribbing. And I needed 60 inches of it. So with the mistakes and the constant, you know, just straight knitting for 60 inches of stockinette, it got a little, sorry about that, cut it um, you know, straight stockinette, I just put it down. Well, I'm going to use this like a, I started frogging it when I found it again, or when I picked it up a few days ago last week. So I started frogging it, and I started over. This is the do-over, <laughs> or the start of the do-over. So, this is it, so I'm going to do it. And hopefully it will look better and I'll make less mistakes. So, and it's living in my color purple bag. Huge tote. Huge tote. I bought when me and my mother and I think my sisters went. We, uh, my mother's women, uh, women's group at church chartered a bus and uh, we went up to Cincinnati, from Louisville to Cincinnati, to uh, see the stage version of Color Purple. And uh, that was a lot of fun. So, um, yeah, nothing like a bunch of church women on a bus. <laughs> but what's said on the bus stays on the bus. Great. So, yeah, that's me in my Color Purple bag. Have I shown this already? Yeah, that's the pure joy. The other shawl that I'm doing Wait on that. Let me share this one. I use um, linen bags. I love them because they're clear. You know, the bags that your linens come in, sheets and things like that. I love them. They're clear. They always have a nice zipper on them. Um, now this is another languishing um, project that I almost frogged, but because I loved it so much and still love it, um, I decided not to. Um, it is on my... These are... I'm doing this on my higher highest. Um, I like the points on these. These are not too sharp. I tell you, the points on, uh, they're almost too sharp. Though. The points, I think it's on my Addies. I don't have, um, they're all fixed, and this is fixed. I don't, uh, I thought I'd try the fixed ones before I invested in any of the interchangeable ones. But I think it's the points on the Addies that are, whoa way too sharp like you've got an injury sharp because I, I kind of push off you know um, anyway this neither here nor there I, I, I don't like them I like them point just pointed enough to grab the yarn but not so pointed that you know I'm gonna have a hole through my finger but anyway this is the architecture architecture texture texture shawl play on the word architecture it's a, 
paid for pattern. And I got the kit on Craftsy. It was on sale. I'd been looking at it for a long time. Archi architecture. Um, and I love it. I absolutely love that. And I'm knitting it on size 3.75 millimeter. And this is how far I've gotten. And the progress keeper I received from uh, Kim the Crafty Nomad, who has a podcast here on YouTube. She has an Etsy store, which you, if you uh, go to her podcast, the link, it's called Something Pearl. But I love, I love it, and I, I still love it. But I came close to frogging this as well. Like I said, the goal is not to have anything languishing. Nothing, nothing. This next uh, shawl is my, what I, I, I dedicate my Sundays to. This is my Sunday shawl. And I signed up for Helen Stewart's Shawl Society number three. And there are six shawl patterns that she will release one a month. And I think four maybe, four have been released. And this is the first one that I decided to make. Um, I have made a mistake on it. You know, I knitted it where, when I should have purled or purled when I should have knitted. Um, and my uh, pattern got off center. I did correct it and I'm not going to frog it. I'm not. I'm just gonna take it slow. Uh, there's some tension issues uh, that it caused. I guess that whole line, I wasn't paying attention. I don't know if you can kind of see that right there. And right here where the pearl is off, where the knitting is off. Yeah, and it's going to be a rectangle wrap. I apologize once again. Oh gosh, let me turn it off. I am so sorry. Okay, I don't think I turned it off. Just hope I don't get too And it's living in my knit happens bag that I got from Joann's. I know if you've been to Joann's you probably have seen this. But the shawl is called Ivy Over the Door. Yeah. And I'm knitting this for myself. So I'm in no rush. And the yarns that I'm using they're yarns that are marled. This is the black to gray and different gray to a lighter gray. And oops. This is a dark or royal blue to a lighter royal blue with a little bit of gray. And the, this color will be close to my face and the gray will be on the ends. 
so yeah and I chose blue because this is the color that I see the richest in I think um, in my last podcast I just briefly talked about or maybe two podcasts ago that I had surgery on my eyes um, had too much fluid in my optic nerves that had to be um, released or let out and after the surgery um, I saw everything in black and white for months and I really think my eyes are still healing um, I some days I can see color better than others which is one reason I haven't uh, gotten my permanent glasses yet because I think my eyes are still changing uh, I go to the eye doctor like every three months and every three months it's a little bit better you know what I'm saying so I know that it's changing um, I will always be blind in my left eye though um, so that keeps me from driving and that's been a real adjustment uh, a real adjustment I try not to be anybody's pain in the butt but I'm so used to my independence and you know autonomy um, that uh, it's it's been an adjustment I'll just say but anyway that's why I chose the blue because it was the first color that I could see and it still may uh, remains the um, color that I see the best um, and I love it I just love it I never considered myself a blue person I considered me a, a person that embraced all colors equally uh, I mean I do it's hard for me to say oh this is my favorite color um, because I love them all I, I can't not not love a color um, some greens are kind of um, some greens like a minty green some of those shades don't look good on me um, but I, I don't think I would not knit with them for some reason does that make sense because I really do love it when I see it you know it's not like a color that's repulsive to me in any way but anyway so now I consider myself a blue person <laughs> so those are all my knitting uh, things that I have going on um, I do want to knit my grandkids some new things they've grown I was trying to knit them socks but it's gonna take a while for me to get back to sock knitting it's uh, I can it's just it's not gelling with me you know I, it I will get back to it I'll try it again but I need I need a break I need a break and I need to say it's okay Karen it's okay <laughs> anyway um, I want to share with you my acquisitions and I have been getting some yarns but it's kind of you know unless I'm working with the yarns I really am not you know compelled to say in my podcast this is what I got this is what I got or this is what I got but this came yesterday and I actually got it I remember that I ordered this yarn for a particular project but I can't remember now what it is and I didn't write it down I have a little notebook that I try to take notes from especially when I watch podcasts that oh I got this idea from such and such or you know or I saw this pattern on such and such podcast and I really want to check it out whatever but if I don't do that it's completely lost so uh, and I always think oh you're gonna remember Karen because you love it so much anyway if I don't write it down it's as good as forgotten so this these yarns came yesterday and it's a cloud born yarn uh, which I think is exclusive to Craftsy, Craftsy slash Blueprint, their new name. It's going to take me a while to get adjusted to that. For a while, I was really confused. Is Blueprint the same as Craftsy? Now I know that it is. So, anyway, this is the yarn that came. I thought it's supposed to be a DK. And it might bloom up to be a DK after it's washed. Uh, for some reason, I was thinking it was, but it doesn't look DK. It looks like a maybe a light sport or heavy fingering, I guess. And it's in the color of autumn and moss. 
So yeah, I got several, I got three of these, four of these, and two of these. And maybe I'll figure out what, what purpose I ordered them. Because I'm really not trying to order yarns, yarns. This is what I'm trying to do. In the spring, Kentucky has its sheep and wool festival. It's only about five years old. So they're still trying to get their footing. And then there's uh, a sheep and wool festival up in Yellow Springs, Ohio. I love the little town of Yellow Springs. Love it. That's where me and my husband went after we uh, tied the knot. Um, we lived together for almost 30 years before we got married, but that's where we went on our honeymoon, nevertheless. I like Yellow Springs. I dig it. But, um, so I want to not spend any money or much money on any yarn. And when I go to those sheep and wool festivals, especially Kentucky's because they're trying to get established, um, by most of my yarns that I want, you know, go f with different projects in mind. This is a theory now. This is an idea that I'm trying to make it a, a goal. <laughs> uh, and by most of my yarns there, based on the projects that I want to do for the next six months. The Yellow Springs uh, Sheep and Wool Festival is in the fall. I think they just had it a couple of weeks ago. So I could actually kind of plan six months at a time what I want to knit or crochet and say these are the yarns I'm buying for these project projects. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to do. So um, I keep thinking I'd like to get a subscription box. Maybe I might get one of the sock boxes which I think runs about 20 or 25 dollars a month. I might try to do that. Um, I might. That's what I, uh, but I do. I want to limit and then just buy all of my yarn there at the festivals. So, um, it's a plan. It's a plan. Um, so that's, that's it for, for all of my making, my makes. So, um, thank you for sitting with me and I, um, hope you come back if you, you know, uh, are interested in, you know, communicating, leave comments, you know, email me, uh, friend me on Ravelry, um, come by my blog. Uh, if you go by my blog, you can read past uh, in, uh, post or entries that I've made about my quilt life, if you're interested in that, because um, that's what it was mainly set up to document. Um, and now I'm just going to talk about a little bit about what I got going on life-wise. Um, the real treat, the real treat for me um, the past few days, and the reason why I was moving furniture, me and my husband were moving furniture, is that my mother is here with us. Um, she will be 90 in December, and uh, she's been living with my sister, uh, for the last two or three years, I think since 2015 or 14, late 14, and um, up until that point, she was living on her own and uh, in her own place. Uh, but um, she's been here. Uh, I've enjoyed having her here. Um, I'm enjoying having her here. It's a real treat for us to, for me to sit down when we have our meals um, and to look across the table and there she is. It, it gives me a sense of, God, how blessed I am or have been when I look at her. And, uh, uh, you know, she has a tendency to repeat things and ask you the same questions within the same five minutes, you know, over and over. But she, of course, and she gets me confused. Sometimes she thinks I'm her sister or, you know, or um, she thinks uh, my son is my brother. Those kinds of things. But then she'll straighten up and say, oh, you know, I met such and such. 
So, um, but she tells stories about her past. I'm enjoying hearing most of them. Some of them are a little uh, hard to hear sometimes. You know, she was a woman uh, a, a born in 1928 and uh, uh, an African-American woman. So sometimes the stories are a little intense. Things get intense. And, um, but, you know, overall, I, 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 I've been so blessed. I've been so blessed. And, um, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, a uh, friend, and, friend and I were, I remember this conversation. Actually, she was a former co-worker. And we were talking about how we were raised. She was just a little bit older than I am. And uh, she said, you know, the situation wasn't perfect. It wasn't perfect, you know, um, as no family is. But, you know, every family has its stuff, right? But we got just enough, just enough to have a little bit of sense and to make it. You know what I'm saying? Just to make it and make it through, make our way through this, this life. And... Um, and for all the rest, you know, you just say, hey, I'm blessed to have made it through. You know, I'm blessed to have made it through. And I've come out on the other side, no matter what it is. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, we got just enough. And I sometimes I look at my own children and I say, you know, I hope they've gotten just enough. You know, just enough to... Um, I hope I've given them just enough. Hope we've given them just enough to make it through, to make it through and move just a little bit further up the road, you know. So anyway, um, I, I won't go into too much. That's, but that's the uh, life change. So we've become a multi generational household again. Um, yep, and uh, I've been looking. I've been catching you podcasters out there. Um, you all have been a real treat and kept me company uh, when I take a break from the news. <laughs> you know, sometimes I take a break from podcasting and watch the news, but then quickly run back to watching my podcast, mainly knitting and crochet. Um, and uh, one of my local home girls, if you don't mind me calling you out, uh, Melanie, uh, at Stitch to My Lou has started a, podga a podcast, um, and it's called Stitch to My Lou, L-O-U, a play off our city of Louisville. So, did I say that right? Louisville, Louisville, Louisville. You don't say it properly. You just Louisville, Louisville, Louisville. Some people say Louisville or L Louisville. It's Louisville, Louisville. <laughs> So anyway, with that, I'm not going to continue on. So uh, peace, and uh, I'll catch you all in about another month or so. Bye-bye.